welcome to season 10 episode 28 of the ubuntu podcast uh, in this episode we're going to at long last announce the winner of our entroware apollo competition Woo-hoo! i'm mark and joining me this week are alan hello and martin hello so martin what have you been up to recently I have been adding lots of bright LED lights above my computer monitors. Ooh, are these colourful ones? Uh, no, well, are they they're, red ones? they sorry, they're a mixture. So they've got multiple modes of operation. They're basically like football stadium lights that project <laughs> up like bunny ears above my monitor and beam down on me and I can control how much blue and orange light they are. Sorry, emit. when you said they're like football stadium ones, yeah. I'm picturing them being really very large and they're, they're probably not fitting inside your office. No, they do fit inside my office quite tightly. So they're on they're on like gooseneck arms, which are about um uh, sixty centimetres long. And then the lights themselves have got 28 LEDs in each. So as I sit here, if I put my arms above my head, my palms are about at the height of the LED panels. Good. And what's the purpose of them? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Well, when I become the next uh, YouTube star, or on, on the way to becoming the next YouTube star, I need good lighting. Uh, for my green screen so that I can do sexy (laughs) visual effects. So the purpose of these lights is to evenly light my green screen so I can play with the OBS effects and uh, have some fun. So that's their purpose. Having first-hand experienced you with your OBS effects. (laughs) (laughs) It's a rare treat. It really is. I... I, I think I may have mentioned this before. I just sat on a work hangout with Martin and he went, oh, check this out and fiddled some switches. And then suddenly there's a tropical scene behind him. There's no longer a green screen. There's this tropical scene. And he just looked out of place, sat right at the front. <laughs> so I said, it would look better if you were somewhere else in the picture. So he just grabs hold of himself in the picture and just like <laughs> whizzes himself around and zooms himself out. So now he's behind a rock in the middle distance of the picture. And you can just see him waving from behind. It's very weird. It's I mean, obviously you had to be there. I do have a screenshot of it because it was so hilarious. <laughs> but I love, it really like brightens up my day when I have a hangout with Martin and he's yeah. on a tropical beach waving at me from behind a rock. I saw an interesting hint someone posted on Twitter that um, Ikea sell a green shower curtain for four quid, which works very Ah. well as a budget green screen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my green screen wasn't expensive, actually. I bought some fabric for about six quid. And whilst I was away, Louise actually made a contraption to, uh, you know, pull this fabric down from. So I, I have I have it all, you know, deployable. Um, But I haven't been using it much because, um. The lighting was difficult, but I now have uh, 56 LED lights to bask in and uh, evenly illuminate. And I also have the webcam on a gooseneck arm as well now. So, yeah, lots of fun. You should add photos of these lights. Uh, But remember, don't look straight into the lights um, or something. Mm. Anyway, should we give away a laptop? Let's let's do do that. that. So a little while ago, uh, the lovely people at Entroware sent us uh, an Apollo laptop, which I reviewed, um, and uh, I really quite enjoyed using it, uh, but I had to put it away because they also said we could give it away. And so we started a competition, um, and that was back in episode 22, uh, and we asked people to send in something and be creative, and um, you can find out all the rules, but basically we asked for uh, some some creation that was done either in 20 lines or 20 lines of prose or 20 tweets or 20 colors or 20 lines or something that 20 uh, somethings of something yes to try and like make it a bit more restrictive and um did we get any entries yes i'd like to say we got 20 but you all failed we got we got slightly less than 20 (laughs) okay 
Um, Only of us are slightly less than 20. So what we need to do is go through them, because one of the things that we really wanted to do was to share these things with you. Uh, some of them are pictures, some of them are code, some of them are audio, and we want to share all of them. So the audio ones will play in the show. Um, we'll put links to the others, the ones that are code, in the show notes so that yeah. you can you can discover them. Uh, we might tweet some of these out as well, because some of them are really quite good. Yeah, and there's uh, well, pictures all as well. They're really quite good, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are. Um, so... Uh, where should we start? Is it? Is it? Shall I? Shall I kick off? Go on then. Okay. So one of the first. Oh, hang on. Well, something that we should probably explain is how we're going to pick a winner. In oh, this. okay. Yes. yes. So we'll run. We'll run through each of them, and we're just doing these in no particular order, rotating around each, picking one to talk about, and then afterwards we'll each score them: bronze, silver, gold, and uh, we'll add the scores up. And this is all completely arbitrary and our own opinion and not based on uh, technical merit or any other criteria and no mentioning Ubuntu Mate does not give you extra points it does there's no there's, no, really there's does. no platinum for mentioning Mate yeah there we'll, totally is we'll add all those up and assuming I can operate this spreadsheet properly uh, <laughs> we'll we'll announce a winner and there'll be no contention live spreadsheet yes. editing what uh, could we, possibly go wrong if we if we have a draw we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it and we'll edit that bit out <laughs> and then we'll <laughs> say we'll say and the winner is and we'll just pretend like the Oscars that it never okay. happened right uh, so yeah. should we crack on yes on. so the first one I want to mention is from listener uh, Roger Light and uh, I like I, I like this because he's he's called it App Hollow you know like Apollo it's App Hollow it's oh, an clever app application it's a, a shell script which hollows out a file it takes like the middle portion of a file so I quite like that. You know, like you've got head to take the top of a file and tail to mm -hmm. take the bottom of a file. Well, this uses head and tail to trim out the middle of a file, which is really, really cool. And it's, well, it's 42 lines, but there's a giant piece of uh, uh, MIT license above that. So we'll allow that. We, we're not super strict on the number of lines of code, but roughly 20. And if it didn't have that MIT boilerplate on the top, it would be 20 lines. So that's the first entry. Roger Light, Apollo. Right. Uh, next up, we have Neil McPhail, who's done us a 20-second audio composition uh, called Pain to Beans. <laughs> <laughs> and are we going to play that now? Yes. Beans, beans. They're good for your heart. <laughs> you Dietary fiber 7 G27% G protein 8 G15% I've heard enough about beans oh, dear me. I worry Sorry. about Neil sometimes <laughs> Thanks for that Neil Thank you Neil uh, Right next up we have uh, Andy Partington <laughs> Who has uh, Written some Why code Why is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Delayed reaction, sorry. <laughs> You're still recovering yeah. from the uh, the ode to beans there. <laughs> okay, I'll just give Alan a moment. Uh, right, I think he's fine. So uh, we have from Andy a script which uses Digital Open uh, Digital Ocean's DNS service, so that you can use it like a dynamic uh, DNS service. So he's written a script so he can update the IP addresses of his home connections using DigitalOcean's DNS. So is this uh, like registry. using DIN DNS but without using any third-party services? Doing it Indeed, all? yes. That's quite clever. Isn't yes. it great? This is, this is, among the entries, I think this is one of the more actually useful. <laughs> <gasps> well done, Andy, for creating something useful. Actually useful. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone on. else, you have been shunned by Mark. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to Joe Ressington's entry. <laughs> uh, Joe uh, sent us a music composition, uh, and we'll hear that now. I nearly played you Neil's again. Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> I found that quite so, challenging. Mm. 
I believe so, that was that was twenty seconds and used twenty notes. That's right. Yes. Brilliant. So that's where the twenty theme comes in there, I, and also tied in with Apollo again. So you know, I love that people are interpreting like our rules and doing different things. I love that. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, Paul Galt has um, written a naughty or nice picker. <laughs> Um, this is this is a short program, which is a bit of a programming joke. Uh, it's uh, you see things like this sometimes. It's some the, the lyrics of Santa Claus is coming to town, uh, interpreted in code. So it makes a list of people, and then it checks the list and checks the list again. So it's making a list and checking it twice, and then decides who's been naughty or nice, and then prints it out. Oh, lovely! What's it written in? Uh, it's written in Java, and I think there's another implementation in. Is it in Python? Python. The other one? Yeah. 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 Nice. Yes. Covering all the language bases. Yes. Brilliant. Yep. Uh, Robert Richkoff, I'm sorry if I've got that pronunciation wrong, has written an Ubuntu podcast desktop notifier. So uh, this is a shell script in 20 lines that you schedule as a cron job. And when we release a new episode of the Ubuntu podcast, it pops up a desktop notification that tells you Alan, Mark and Martin are connected and ready to speak to your brain. Nice. Another useful thing. <laughs> Brilliant. That, just to be clear, like being useful was not a criteria. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. so within 20 lines, you're golden. Um, next up, uh, Gentleman Punter. I don't know if that's a pseudonym or not, but Gentleman Punter <laughs> sent us... Um, sounds a bit like a Terry Pratchett character. Uh, uh, <laughs> they sent us um, a website, whatarebeans.com. <laughs> <laughs> if you visit whatarebeans.com, you find it embedded a YouTube video uh, atop a picture of lots of beans, <laughs> quite a lot of beans, and this video will be familiar for anyone who's heard my stupid voice saying, what are beans? Um, I believe this is 20 lines of HTML, it is it? Is. It's 20 lines of HTML, and there's a bit of style in there as well. Um, oh. And it's very readable. I can I can read this, so it's, uh, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice, simple example. But it actually went to the effort of registering a domain <laughs> in order to enter a contest to win a laptop. Um, what kind of nutter does that? Yeah, who would do oh, no. that? Brilliant. Who would do that? Brilliant. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Hey, Martin. Uh, next yeah. up, um, Ivan Pejic has written us um well it's it's a sort of a two-part entry there is an image of our logo using pixels in 20 different colors and then there's a 20 line python script which decodes the image into uh, a rendition of our theme tune wait what i did not know that i saw the image i i and so there's a script in the github repository if you run that oh. script it decodes the i don't it understand how it works an opus file Yes. which is an embedded version of not our theme tune, but a, a variation of, of our theme tune. tune. Yeah. Yes. Right. Another one that's going to get us done on YouTube. Let's play it. So is this a bit like stenography, where you you embed hide something in an image? I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't really understand because it's got the, <laughs> like the gaps in the rings of our logo, and yet it still decodes to a um, a like single string of sound. So it's obviously doing something clever, which I don't understand. And, and including and including our theme tune as well, and, and our, our logo. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Winner. Right. Next. Well, no, sorry, not winner. Um, <laughs> let's carry on. <laughs> Nicely backpedal there, Mark. Oh, edit that bit out. Let's not have any confusion. Uh, right. Next, we have Matthias Werner, who sent us a haiku, which goes like this: Installing Ubuntu. Quick installation creates hope. Network unreachable. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I do love a haiku. Yes, I love a haiku too. Um, next up, Masood. Abkenar, I think Abkenar, I'm really sorry, uh, has sent us a command line video editor. Uh, and he's posted it on GitLab and it's called Titler. And what it does is you feed it a video uh, 
and a piece of text, and it creates an image that it puts on as a title on the front of the video, and then re-encodes the video, but with the title slide on the front of the video. It puts uh, like an empty slide, your title text, and, and, and then the rest of your video. Um, yeah, it's it, and it's very neat, and it's exactly 20 lines, even with four lines of text telling you how to use it, and the fact that it's licensed under the GPL v3. Um, it's lovely. The only flaw I have with it is it didn't work for me, um, but I don't know if that's the version of FFmpeg that I have installed. I did try it a few times, but there was some command line wibbly wobbly. I will file a bug issue on uh, GitLab, so I will let you know that doesn't disqualify you because if you make this working, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant little script. Uh, next up, I apologize in advance for butchering this name, Johan Seifert. Um, has written us a 20-line story about um, getting involved in Linux, and I'll read it for you now. My name is Johan Seifert, and I would like to share with you my Linux story. I am a South African, and about eight years ago, I moved to Russia to serve my local church. A few years ago, I got married to a Russian lady, and then I realised that I need a part-time work to pay the bills. So I checked around and a friend of mine is a sysadmin at a local university and asked me if I want to come and take over from him as he is returning to the States and he will teach me. So I agreed, even though I knew nothing about computers. When I arrived there, I was told that 80% of the computers are running Linux, Ubuntu 1204 GNOME Classic and servers stock Ubuntu. A huge shock to me as I only know Windows. I started to play around and it slowly moved all my home PCs to Ubuntu and also the church where I'm serving and friends. Today, we are using Ubuntu Mate 1604 for workstations and Ubuntu for servers. And I truly love the power of Linux. I also started to listen to the podcasts like Jupiter Broadcasting, nowadays the Lunduk Show and the Ubuntu Podcast. And all they, these are my love for Linux inspired me to make Linux tutorials and distro previews and share it on YouTube. Martin Winpress made my day when he shared one of my videos and then more and also subscribed to my channel, Ubuntu Made Simple, and that encouraged me that I am not messing up and that I am playing my part in the community. I am forever grateful. I would love to win the Apollo Notebook and use it to create more data. P.S. I have contacts in the UK who come to Russia often. Thanks for reading my 20 lines. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Johan. Nice story. Yeah. Next up, we have Oividu Serban. Sorry if that's how you're not pronouncing that, but there you go. Uh, they have written a script which translates random text into tweets. What? Yes. Now, I did run this earlier, and I'll <laughs> and be you're honest with from you. For spam. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Twitter is still a mystery to me, and it did translate a work of Shakespeare into many tweets oh. using obviously what are Twitter shorthand for words and common oh, phrases. That's clever. But I, it just, it was gibberish to me, but it clearly did something clever. <laughs> so that, that's what that one does. I like that because there, there's, there's, you know, there's sometimes like you see these like uh, multi-part tweets over it. That, so, yes. So you could just feed it a long piece of text and it will. Yes, this was, uh, it was one tweets. of, one of Shakespeare's sonnets, I believe. And what it does is it breaks them up and then each, it links to the, the next tweet in the chain. Nice. Automatically. That's pretty clever. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Warnock sent us um, a note and a poem. And uh, am I reading the entire note or just the poem? You can summarise the note. Okay, I'll should... summarise the note. Yeah. Uh, so he has... Um, written a poem about how he feels about the world today, basically, and he wanted to express himself in 20 lines. Uh, it was quite a challenge for him because he's used to writing code and not poems. So here it is. There are people out there who want to see us destroyed, with every attack a chink in the armour that society deploys. So much pain is bought with their horrific acts, the countries are less free after every attack. But the truth is that these people can't harm this precious thing. An attack on us does not make you or me less free cannot track my every step. It does not put me under monstrous surveillance net. It cannot allow me to be in prison without cause. It does not arrest me for a comment made without proper thought. The only people that are hurting our, f hurting our freedom are those who control the laws. Politicians scrambling to show they're tough on crime, removing our freedom one piece at a time. 
These attacks are horrible and it does need to stop. However, removing our freedom is not the solution we sought. To support these laws is to stand against what makes us so great. It's so easy to be driven by fear, anger and hate. But no good decision is made with these feelings in control. Our politicians serve us and you should let them know. Because the truth is, they only they can bring us out of this hole. Okay. Um, next up, we have Dave Hingley, who sent us the Ubuntu Guys comic. So this was, I think, this one was written in 20 minutes. <laughs> yes. And I've checked uses 20 colors, which was ah. another one of the things yes. that we stipulated. Yes. Um, so uh, I think we're going to put this comic in our show notes. We are simply going to have to put it on the show notes and probably tweet it out in order for you to enjoy this because us reading it is not going to do it justice. Yep, it won't do my quiff justice. <laughs> no, nor, nor the furious energy with which I am making things. Yes. So this is this is caricatures of the three of us. Yes, in a comic. Yeah. We are the Ubuntu We guys are the Ubuntu question. guys, yeah. Yes, excellent. Okay, Martin, what's next? Uh, Ian Phillips um, has created an image using 20 object images. What? Um, yeah, so uh, digging into this, he uh, I'm not sure what software he used, but he created um, 20 vector images and then combined them together so that they make a single image. And that single image is a rather nice-looking glass of beer in an Ubuntu logoed glass. Oh, this is... The, uh, sorry, I went on Flickr and I ended up looking at a picture of a train in his gallery. So it's not, <laughs> it's not that one, I it's guess. It's not that, no. no. It's not. No. <laughs> no, it's... Yeah, it's a, it's a beer glass with an Ubuntu logo. And oh, yes, I see. I think, yeah, and he's put the composition He's 20 in vectors, there. basically. Right. Yeah, yes. You can see he's, like, highlighted each of the different vectors that it uses. Our audience are so clever. I I, yes. I have no idea how to do this stuff. It's fantastic. Okay, next up. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> Brian Walton has sent us some things. Now, there's <laughs> there's a few things here. Uh, which Do I focus on one of them or all of them or what? Well, it's... This is sort of the aggregator entry, isn't it? In in that they've Brian has basically submitted twenty lines of code, twenty seconds of audio, I think, and a twenty twenty shape abstract image using twenty colors, and and combined it all together to create one work, which is what. Uh so it's a Sinclair Spectrum basic program, <laughs> uh, which is called 20.bass. Uh, and there's also a, a tape file, which I've loaded into a virtual Sinclair Spectrum. And I've run the code. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident it's not going to hijack my device. So I'm... Do you not have time to record it onto an actual tape and run it on your actual Spectrum? No, I didn't. You did I... send us an OG file to do that if we wanted to. <laughs> I feel bad that I actually didn't use a real Spectrum, given I have three of them. So uh, I will play the audio rendition that came out of the Sinclair Spectrum emulator when I loaded this basic program. Stand by. Never need to replace the audio in our shows on YouTube. <laughs> we'll get a Commodore 64. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can, I, yeah, I can feel the, the hate from the Commodore owners coming coming in right now. Send it to um, Does the Commodore Martin. 64 have a better sound tri- chip or yes. something? Yes. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, don't get started. Yeah. Uh, oh, please don't. No. Um, <laughs> next up, uh, Martin Tallacy um, has sent us a point cloud. What's a point cloud? Uh, it's like a 3D, mm. a 3D rendering of an object, but just using individual points. Um, yeah, uh, and it's it's com- wow. it's composed of 20 photos of a statue of Apollo. So you've got this 3D rendering of a statue made out of individual points in space, 
and it's really cool. Good lord. Yeah. He sent yeah. us two of those as well. So we've got uh, one of an, a statue called Apollo something or other and one of the god Apollo, uh, each taken with 20 photographs. I'd never heard of this before. No. We'll have links in the show notes so you can have a play with these yourself and and, yes. and see what on earth it is we're trying to describe because our words will not do it justice. <laughs> Definitely needs to be seen, not described. It kind of looks like the kind of thing that you... like the early stuff that was generated with um, the Xbox, what's it camera, the Kinect camera. Those oh, kind yeah. Of, like, yes. Images that yes. people made with homebrew software, but look, you know, like a thousand times better. That's really nice. Yeah, well done. Yep. And that takes us to our last entry, which is from Lucy Walton, who uh, used 20 hand-drawn lines to draw a portrait of each of us. So Alan, Mark, and myself in a row... 20 lines so we'll yeah. have that in the show notes i really thought i had more hair than that but when i <laughs> when there's a line drawing of mark I, next to I me i think mark she has... used a lot of these lines on your wrinkles around your eyes to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure that these these are the um these are the pictures of us from the website yes yes yeah. yes yeah. So I think your hair was quite tidy yeah. in, the, in that She's picture. She's also been very flattering and maybe a bit thinner than I am in, the, in that photo, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. No uh, bonus uh, points or favouritism for doing that, however. Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> dear me. Right. So that's the full list of 18 entries, and we're already 22 minutes in. We need yeah. to score these things. Score them. Yes. Right. Okay. So, Alan, you were the first to start. So what is your bronze entry position? Uh, entrance sorry uh oh uh, uh, um i i'm gonna go with andy partington uh, i'm gonna give him a bronze because uh it was useful and well I, done I, I well done andy with your digital things. ocean dns update. right uh martin what's your first bronze my score, first dude? bronze entry is matthias werner with his haiku uh, okay, okay. And Mark, what's your first bronze go to? My bronze is going to Ian Phillips for his 20 object vector image, because I like vector images. Okay. Well done, all three of you. Right. right. So, Alan, who gets your silver medal? Oh, golly gosh. Um, I'm going to have to say the command line video editor, uh, because I... I just like a script that's really useful, and this is another one that's super useful. So well, well done, Masood. Yep. That's a silver medal from Alan there. Um, I'm going to award my silver medal to Joe Ressington's music composition. Mm. Mark, what's your silver okay. medal going to? I am going to award my silver medal to the Point Cloud of Apollo from Martin Tallacy. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's then. a distinct possibility that we may have three. <laughs> yeah, we might have to go to a tiebreaker. Yes, yes. there might be a tiebreaker okay. coming. Okay, then. So, uh, my gold uh, points thing. I'm I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to give it to Brian Walton for. Uh, you know, I said the other <laughs> the other two points were for useful stuff, and I'm. <laughs> and now you've gone for complete folly. <laughs> well, this could be useful in combating our YouTube problem. Uh, because I don't think anyone would claim copyright on that beeper sound from a signal spectrum, <laughs> but it would generate feedback from our listeners complaining about the awful music, I think. So I, Brian gets my gold. I'm well done, Brian. Yes, Martin. Okay, my uh, gold medal goes to Dave Hingley and his Ubuntu Guys comic. Oh, if I could give another gold. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. And my gold also goes to Dave Hingley and his oh. two guys comic. Well done, Dave Hingley. So. You are the winner of this competition. <laughs> I love the fact that this is the one thing that our listeners currently can't see. See? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can, because by the time you're listening to this, you can go to the website and you'll see it on the show notes yes. right now. So yes. just go to ubuntupodcast.org and you'll see it in all its glory right yes. there. Right there. And just to say... I was like, I was reading through this. It was Martin saying it to us on Telegram. I was reading through it, and I was like, you know, suitably 
amused and cheery by it and then i got to the last frame and i properly burst out laughing <laughs> i really did enjoy it excellent it, yes and and i love my hair and that was great <laughs> yes well done well well done dave and i really want to find out what happens in the next installment now we have a pirate map i would yes i would totally patreon the hell out of this comic if it was, <laughs> if it was a regular thing i would pay my ego yeah. would pay for this comic to exist on a regular basis yes i'm afraid um, that vanity would get the better of me as well and i would too um i want to thank everyone who entered this it was amazing yes. and I, it's such a diverse range of entries from music poems to texts to code to weird bizarre things with sinclair spectrums i think everyone is a winner but obviously yeah. dave is more <laughs> dave of a is winner, winner. <laughs> yeah. dave's the one who's going to have the laptop <laughs> held triumphantly above his head but the diversity of entries and the creativity on display was fantastic was and we great. really enjoyed looking through all of those thank you everyone yes um, thank you i'll get in contact with dave and we'll sort out uh, shipping it over to him excellent thanks everyone Mmm, that gooey love. If there's an app that you've been using that you just have to tell everyone about, email your gooey love to show at ubuntupodcast.org. And now it's time for some gooey love. And uh, the gooey love this week is SC Controller. Now this is, um, this is a gooey which... Uh, and a standalone driver for the Steam controller. So this means that you can use the Steam controller outside of Steam, uh, but it doesn't just let you use the controller, it gives you a full configuration interface and a load of other handy like on-screen tools. So this means that you can do things like playing wine games with the Steam controller really easily. Mm, wow. Yes. And it's like, it's as good in terms of like the configurability of it. It's as good as Steam's own one. It's got pretty much every feature that the that Steam's own interface lets you do is, is built into this. And it looks really good. And like, it can also do things like you can have, um, if you press the, the Steam button in the middle of the controller, it pops up an on-screen display and it, you can have your menu of games in there if you want and do other useful things like switching modes and switching windows. It's very well done oh, i can't finish this podcast quick enough to go and install that how do, <laughs> how do i install this thing um i think you uh, is there a PPA? there is a deb there's a deb there's built a deb. by the open Seas build oh service. yes there you go so there's an open Seas right. build there service repo and then you install it from that uh, so yes Fantastic. i've been using this to play sonic mania in wine that is a great gooey love hmm. well done did you find that nicely uh, i did hmm. well done you thank you did you know you can come and chat with us and other listeners in between shows? Come and join us in our Telegram group at ubuntupodcast.org slash telegram. And now it's time for your feedback, fortunately, which is rather short, thanks to all of the entries into the competition. Uh, first this week, uh, Will posted a comment on our website, ubuntupodcast.org. Could one get away with carrying around the pocket, I guess that means the GPD pocket, or mm -hmm. Gemini, and no other phone? I would be interested to try a real Linux phone. I was interested in the Ubuntu phones, but they were never sold in the US. The pocket seems too big to hold as a phone, and I worry about the effect on battery life of running applications developed for the desktop. I also don't know if there's acceptable versions of apps, like a dialer or a GPS navigation app for Linux. Will, um, so... Uh, hmm. we've mentioned the GPD Pocket, and you have one, don't you? I do have a GPD Pocket. I haven't done an awful lot with it. I can tell you that the battery life is really very good, though. It's it's upwards of 10 hours, um, and that's running, you know, regular desktop stuff. Uh, there are GPS navigation apps that you can install, so I think you're covered there. I don't know about dialers, and also you would need to plug in, like, a, a GSM module or something in order right, to have so a phone have a on it. so it doesn't have SIM card slot. No, but, you know, you could use some sort of, you know, IP to, to you know, a SIP gateway yeah. or something to get yeah. around that issue. I don't think the GPD Pocket would be ideal as a phone. I think you'd look like a bit of a mentalist having a seven-inch <laughs> laptop a clam open against the side of your face. Um, I've also backed well, you the Gemini you PDA, could, you could use a and that does device, seem to be more adapted to the user's maybe an oversized phone-type 
um, device. Could you not just use a Bluetooth device? Like you wouldn't oh, have to well, have you and your on modern your inventions. Yeah, you probably could, couldn't you? <laughs> Yeah. Or you could strap it to your wrist. You'd need to have it open, though, because I think it would... Strap um... it to your wrist. <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> like like some sort of like 80s sci-fi TV show, like flip it open. And... Okay. Yeah. We're all a bit heady and a bit silly, but um, maybe you might look a bit strange with it strapped to your wrist or against your face, but it's possible. It, it would last as long as a modern phone, I think. Um, now, Mark, uh, not that one, emailed us at show at ubuntupodcast.org. There is an Argentinian shop in Bayswater, and here is a link for the Mate vessel. Oh, this is the gourd replacement Ooh. service. Oh, I need this. So, yes, we had a conversation with this um, a, a week or two ago about, yes, about Mate gourds for brewing the Mate drink. Mm. Buy one, buy one, buy it now. I think I might have to do pounds. that. Okay, we'll right. do. Yep, and that's the <laughs> that, end of the yeah. feedback. And that is all for episode 28. Oh, you're saying that, are you? Apparently. Oh, no, I'm not. It's not me at all. I'm sorry. I'll shut up now. That's all for episode twenty-eight. Really? We'll be back next week. I prefer to win. Martin. I will have my, <laughs> I will have my microphone back, and we'll have more news, comment, and discussion. <sighs> oh. Shall oh, I play us so out with this special little ditty? Do it. See Go you on. next time, everyone. Bye. Love it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should tell Alan that what our beans.com was down to me. <gasps> oh no.